Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So before we start with our lesson, let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Bible verse for today comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. The Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. The Bible repeatedly reminds us that we are in a spiritual war with forces that are strong, malicious, and evil. We should steer clear of every appearance of evil. We shouldn't involve ourselves in anything related to Satan and his work. But we also need to remember that our God is greater than Satan and all of his evil angels. God is faithful. God will not abandon us to our enemy. God will strengthen us and protect us from attack if we will let him. So always remember that our Lord is so, so, so faithful to us. Sometimes, or more often, it is us that is not being faithful with him. And with, with, with this kind of faithfulness, it should be um, used to strengthen then us um, in every in everything that we do. Okay, there are a lot there are a lot of evil forces around us. Uh, we have we have this pandemic, pandemic or whatever that they call it. However, this exists. Totoo siya, no? And um, um, apart from that, there are uh, political issues or political problems, social problems in and out of our country. But we should never lose hope because we, we should remember that our Lord, that our God is faithful to us. He will not abandon us. He will not forsake us. He, he is always there. Just call him. Allow him to be with you so that everything that you do, um, you, you do it in his glory. Okay? I am inviting everyone as we reflect and we pray in silence. To you belongs all glory forever and ever. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. St. John Baptist de la Salle, leave Jesus in our hearts. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Alright, so we have now this next chapter, next type of data structure, and that is tax. So as you have noticed, we have here a lot of examples or a lot of pictures about stocks. No, uh, you could have a stack of um, pancakes or a stack of Lego, or you could have a stack of plates, or you could have a stack of Pringles and a lot more. Okay. So what about stock? So what is a stock? Okay. Or what is uh what is this type of data structure? Okay. So, in this uh, chapter, you're going to learn what stock is all about and how it is represented. And also, you're going to discover that uh, these stocks, okay, or the stock is also used in various applications, okay, and understand the different operations of stocks. Just like what we have done in Array and Linked List, we have different operations, so same is true with stocks. We have um, actually three operations lang naman, okay? So, mas kaunti ito. Yan. As an example, we have here um, 
ah uh, medyo ano lang siya, no? puro bilog-bilog lang yan, ma'am. Pero uh, I just repres- I just use it as a representation of plates, okay? How many of you are uh, uh, how many of you know how to uh, wash the dishes? Okay. Mm-hmm. So most of you, since on the onset of the quarantine, uh, maybe some of you or most of you know how to do the household chores, right? Because um, you are there in the house and uh, you want to help your parents, so that's why you you are the one to who, who volunteers to wash the dishes. Okay, so every time you wash the dishes, or uh, let's have the plates. Okay, every time you wash the plates, what is the manner, or how do you um organize these plates? And okay, so most of you maybe ang ginagawa ay katulad ng the usual na na operations no or usual na process like uh sa example ko nga dyan, no we have we have the stack of plates how come nagkaroon ng stack of plates diyan so kunwari maraming plato di ba and then you're going to um to soak the first plate okay so yung una mong na na uh, nasabon ng plato lalagay mo sa isang tabi. Okay? And then, followed by the second plate. So, yung second plate, then, sasabunin. And then, saan mo ilalagay yung second plate? Okay, very good. You're going to put it on top of the first plate. Right? Or on top of the previous soaked plate. Okay? And then, on your third plate, so, sinabon naman naman yung pangatlong plato, so definitely, it will be placed again on top of the second plate, okay? And then the fourth plate, sasabunin, it will be placed on top of the third plate. So that means every time there is a new plate that has been soaked, okay? All you have to do is to put it on top of the previous one, right? And every time you rinse the plates, okay? We normally do, we get what's on the top, okay? And then that's the first one that we rinse, okay? So the plate that is placed on top of the uh, pile of plates means that is the last plate that has been soaked, right? Siya yung pinakuli mong sinabon. Kaya nandun siya sa ibabaw, Okay? And then, kapag babalawan na, definitely, ang unahin mo ay yung huling pinatong mo doon sa pile of plates. Tama? Or doon sa stack of plates. So, ibig sabihin, yung huling sinabon, yun yung una mong babalawan. Tama? So, last, last soaked will be first to rinse. Okay? And then, yung second to the last, yun yung second na maririns. And so and so forth, hanggang makarating ka dun sa unang plato, which is nasa ilalim, okay? Siya yung unang dumating, unang plato mong sinabon, okay? Pero, siya yung huling mababalawan. Okay? So, you're doing stock operations pala all the while, no? Every time you wash the dishes, especially whenever you wash plates, Okay? So that means, um, in stocks, okay, in this type of data structure, um, it is simply an ordered list of elements wherein all insertions or all of its operations are done at the top. So operations include insertions and deletions. All are done at the top. Okay? Ulit. Unang plato. Di ba? Pangalawa, so, nagdagdag ka ng pangalawang plato, nasa ibabaw. Okay? Pangatlong plato, nasa ibabaw nung pangalawa. Pang-apat, pang-lima, pang-anim, pang-pito. So, sabihin, yung last, okay? Or every time na nag-i-insert ka, laging it is inserted on top of the stock. Okay? So, nag-i-insert na, dadagdagan siya. On top. 
Okay? And every time you delete, every time you delete an element, okay, unang tinatanggal yun nasa ibabaw. Laging nasa ibabaw yung tinatanggal. So, all operations are done at the top. Okay? Wala naman sigurong gumawa rito na yung unang platong sinabon niya ay hindi yung unang platong babanlawan niya. Di ba? Does it make sense na yung una mong, binan, ah, una mong sinaboy, hindi yung una mong babanlawan? Okay? Na nakastock yun, ha? Okay. So, wala namang gumawa. Alam, pahirapong pang sarili mo. So, siguro tatlo kaya pa. Pero halimbawa, uh, you have 100 plates. So, definitely, hindi kaya yun, no? Pahirapong ang sarili, aangatin mo yung 99 plates <laughs> on top of the first plate. Okay? So, it's not, uh, it's not that efficient. Okay? So, in stocks, we follow this kind of last in, first out, or LIFO. Last in, first out. Ito yung sinasabi natin. Uh, sometimes they call it push down. Okay, as I have mentioned a while ago, um, operations of stocks are done at the top. So, it follows the behavior last in, first out. So, in, in the Bible also, we have the last in, first out. Sabi ay kung sinong nauuna ay siyang mauhuli at ang mga nahuhuli ay siyang mauuna. Okay? So, um, we have now two ways of representing stocks. Okay? So, you could... I represent stock using doubly linked list or using an array. Okay? So, if why doubly linked list? So, in, in doubly linked list, we have the, the uh, left link field and the right link field, which means we have the access for the predecessor and the successor. Okay? So, um, remember uh, that the operation of the stock is um, all insertions are done at the top. So, top is also the tail. Remember? Head, bottom, HB, and tail, top. Right? So, every time we insert a new element, we always insert it at the tail. Right? And every time we delete an element right, in a stock, it is always at the tail, okay? So, let us say, I'm going to delete, I'm going to delete at the top, of course, okay? Why at the top? Because that's the behavior of stocks, okay? Last in, first out, okay? Okay. Now, um, if we're going to make, why not single link list? If we're going to make use of single link list, um, and you're going to delete an element at the tail, that would be a challenge, okay? Because you have to traverse from the head down to the last node prior to the tail, okay? And you have to store the address of the um, node prior to the tail, okay? The previous node prior to the tail. So that means uh, that that would require additional cost or additional operation, okay? So, instead of using single link list, we could use doubly link list, okay? So, if we're going to delete an element, so there's no question about inserting kasi you're going to insert lang naman at the tail, at sa dulo, okay? And if we're going to delete at the tail also, um, <clears throat> let's say I have here, uh, uh, I have included the address 20H, okay? With the node, let's say, A na lang lagay natin, okay? Yung value niya ay A. So, if we're going to delete at the tail, it will be a lot easier because all you have to do is to find the tail. I mean, 
in your in your um pseudo code or in your program you could you could simply um make the tail as your input parameter okay and then all you have to do is um you have to assign the new tail okay so what will be the value of the new tail so the new tail will be 20h because this is the uh, previous node prior to the tail okay prior to the current tail so that means we have here 20h okay 20h so 20h sa natin makukuha yon makukuha natin 20h if if we have only the tail okay, as our input parameter makukuha natin siya dun sa left link field ng tail okay so in 20h i under siya ng left link field ng 05h okay Tama? So, 05H, that is the address of our tail. Okay? Referencing to 20H. So, 20H is a uh, left link field. Node that left. Okay? So, siya yung nasa node. Node that left. Okay? Okay. So, we have 05H referencing to 20H. Therefore, 20H will be assigned as our new tail. Okay? So, tail will now be 20H. And then, what will happen to 05H? <laughs> ah, 20H referencing to, okay, you know that right niya. Ito. You know that right niya. Tama, anak. So, dapat itong part na to, naka null na lang siya. Very good. So, lalagay niya null. Okay. So, ito ay magiging null. So, if this will be null, definitely there will be no link. So, ito, mawawala na siya ng link from 20H to 5H, uh, to 05H. So, it was now deleted. Okay? So, until natin, hindi na, hindi na ito. Okay? Ito ng 20H. Okay? Alright, for the next slides, allow me to off my camera. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so another way of representing uh, stocks is through the use of one-dimensional array. Now, the question is, when when are we going to use um, W-link list? And when are we going to, make, to use one-dimensional array? Okay, so I have here a note, okay, a note to remember. So, if you know, if you know the maximum size of the stock, okay, you you will use one dimensional array but if you do not know the maximum size of the stock you will use okay doubly link list right so in in one dimensional array definitely every element okay also the initial element will be stored at the first address okay at index r sub 1 okay and r sub 1 is stored at the bottom okay and then the next element are stored on top of the previous element. And next element, again, will be on top of the previous element. So, ganyan lang siya. Okay? So, initially, ang, ang bottom and, and ang top natin could be yung R sub 1 lang. Okay? And as it adds element, definitely the value of the top will be changed. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Um, later, we'll have um, simulation of, of the operations of these stocks, okay? So, we have only three operations of stocks. Yay! Hindi na siya katulad ng dati na maraming operations, no? So, ngayon, we have only three, okay? Before, when I was still studying, we have only two stock operations, the push and pop, okay? But, of course, nowadays, things evolve, okay? Nothing is permanent. So, definitely, it adds another 
operation and we call uh, we call that as stop top okay so uh, what are these operations so whenever we insert an element at the top of the stock we call it push right so push not insert okay so you, you, you will use push and then whenever you delete an element out of the stock or out from the stock definitely um, before deleting you're going to retrieve that element Okay. So retrieving is like uh, we're going to display the value of that element and then we delete the element from the stock. Okay. So we call it pop. Okay. So isa lang. <laughs> pop lang ang tawag doon. So pag pinap mo siya, retrieve mo at the same time, didelete mo siya. Okay. While the stock top, it's like pop. Uh, the difference is it, it just retrieves the element or copies the element without deleting the top element, right? So again, we have push, that's inserting a new element, pop, that is deleting an element, deleting and retrieving, or retrieving and deleting muna, retrieving muna bago ang delete, right? While stock top, it returns the, uh, the top element, right? Without deleting the element, right? So, Let's have this pseudo code, okay? So, push. So, if we have push A, okay? So, value is A. So, let us say we have, we have an array. Okay? We will make use of array. So, hindi ko na pahihirapan ang buhay ninyo, okay? An array of size, let's say size 5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it starts at R sub 1. Okay, wait. So, R sub 1. Thank you. R sub 1. R sub 2. R sub 3. R sub 4, R sub 5. I just make it so R in name R. <laughs> okay. So, wala pang laman yung stock. Okay? Wala pang laman yung stock. So, definitely, top is equal to 0. Okay? Next. What's the value of n? n is the size of the array, right? Okay? Or sorry, size of the stock. The size of the stock is 5, okay? So top is 0 if top is not equal to 5. True. So if it is true, then increment top. So top will now be 1, okay? And then r sub top, so r sub 1, one is equal to value. Okay, so value is A. So A, assign natin sa R sub 1. So R sub 1 will now have will now have a value of A. Parang hindi kita, no? So it has a value of A. Okay. And then end. Okay? So let's say we have this sequence of uh, push. Push A. Wait, wait. <laughs> let's say the sequence is push A. Push B. And then let's say I have X is equal to 10. So 
So I have push and sort. I, I cannot have that pala because we have an array should be of the same data type. <laughs> so let's say another another character push C. Right? So all we have to do is okay. So if we have push B, okay. So ito naman magiging B. Yeah. Pasok siya dito. Susudo ko na to. So if top, top natin is 1. Yeah. So from 0 naging 1. Not equal to 5 through then increment top. So top will be 2. And then R sub top, R sub 2 equals value. So value natin this time is letter B. So, B will be assigned to R sub 2. So, R sub 2 will now have a value B. Okay? So, that will be placed on top of A. Okay? So, next. Actually, dapat iwahulay ang ganyan, di ba? Okay. So, wala naman tayong array na, I mean, one dimensional array tapos ganito ginawa ko, di ba? Um, para lang madali sa inyong pagsulat. Okay? Although, I would appreciate kung mamanumanong ninyo talaga ito na mayroong R sub 1 sa bawat, sa bawat operation. No? R sub 1, R sub 2, hanggang R sub 5. Okay? So, input again, push C, so value natin ngayon, C, and then R sub top, top is 2, not equal to 5, through then increment top. So increment top, that would be 3. And then R, um, R sub top equals value. So R sub 3, R sub 3 equals value. So value natin is C. Okay, so C will be placed on top of D. Again, ito siya. Okay? So, sige, itulin natin. Let's have push again. Push B Push E And then push F Okay. So, again, let's go back to push. Push D. Okay? Push D. So, value is D. R, uh, if top, top is now 3, not equal to 5, through then increment top, so top will now be 4. And then R sub 4 equals to value. So, the value this time is D. So, D will be assigned to R sub 4. So, R sub 4 will now be Tugtungan ko na lang, ha? Ayan na lang. Okay po. So, we have A, B, C, and then D. Okay? Again, let's have push E. So, E. Okay? If R sub top, I'm ah, sorry, if top, top is value I4. So, 4, not equal to 5, through the increment top, so magiging 5. And then, R sub 5 is equal to value. Value is E. Okay? So, E will be assigned to R sub 5. Okay? Pakita nito na ito. Okay. So, R sub 5 will now be E. E, C, B. A. Okay? So, pag hinihan ko kayo ng solution, ganito yung gagawin nyo din mga solution. Okay po. So, how do I check that? I would check that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points plus the variable, the value of the variables. Okay? So, next. Kaya naman na tayong last push. Push E. Uh, push F. Sorry. 
So, F. So, top, if top, top natin, value I5. Is 5 not equal to 5? Very good. False. They are equal. So, pag false, punta siya sa else. Else, print. So, sa output natin, so, ibig sabihin, itong array na to ay stack natin. Diba? Nasa memory lang yan. Memory. Okay? Same is true with the top. Under siya ng memory. Okay? So, it is not, they were not displayed on the screen. Well, for the output, yung may mga print. Okay? So, print pushing is not allowed. So, nakalagyan, pushing is not allowed. It's not allowed. Bakit hindi allowed? Kasi, yun, hindi ka pwede mag-push. Kasi, puno na yung stock. Stock is full. Okay. Is full. Okay? Okay, so when we say pop, that means we're going to retrieve at the same time we're going to delete, right? So let us say we have the stock. This is nothing stock kanina, no? Na merong five elements. A. We have A. 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 Okay. And then this is our R sub 1. Okay, why do I start at 1? Remember, not all programming languages start at index 0. There are some programming languages that starts at index 1. Okay. And for the simplicity purposes, we will start our index at index 1. One. Okay? I know Java starts at index 0. So, kaya yun yung kapag nagtatranslate na kayo from pseudo code to a programming language. Okay? So, you're going to follow the syntax. You're going to follow the rules of a certain programming language. Okay? So, let's say we have pop. So, pop, normally, wala na, wala na tayong nilalagay dito, no? When we say pop, simply, we we pop what's whatever is on top of the stock. So that means if I would have pop, okay, I have the statement pop. And yung given natin tapos nag pop ako. What will happen? Na lang, ah, na lang natin. Hindi pala Hindi na lang yung natin. So, pop. Wow, challenge. Wait, ah. Okay, so if we're going to pop the element, that means this one will be taken out of the stock. So, sa output natin, so ang ating memory, memory, and then let's say itong output, so sa output natin, will have E. Okay? Remember, we're going to retrieve. At the same time, we're going to delete. So, what will happen if we're going to pop um, the, the content of the stock will now be A, B, C, and D. Okay? In that arrangement pa rin. Kasi A yung unang dumating, kaya A nandun sa ilalit. Okay? Again, uh, paano nangyari yun? So, following this pseudocode. Uh, 
Okay, let's follow that. So, do ko. Tingnan natin kung tatama. Tap natin, ay sorry. Tap natin ang value. Initially, value ng top natin ay 5. Ito na rin lagi sa hindi top is 5. Okay? Ba? At index 5. So, top is 5. So, top 5 not equal to 0. True. So, if that is true, print R sub top. Tama? Print R sub top. R sub 5 is E. So, pin rin si E. Okay. Parang hindi yan. Next. Siyempre, um, you're going to delete E. Okay? Kaya, R sub top, instead of 2, okay, sorry. instead of 2, Let's make this equal. Okay? Ang yung nating word na 2. So, yan ay set r sub top to space. Now, since not uh, all uses um, space, yeah, we could make use of null okay? or nil. Null or nil is... Um, is a value that is neither blank nor zero. Okay? So, we could have R sub top equals null. Okay? So, R sub 5, R sub 5 is equal to null. So, this time, ito magiging null. O, basta alam natin null, yet, null na yan. Okay? And then, decrement top. So, decrement top magiging 4. Okay? Eh, may pop uli ako. Pop. Okay? So, again, nagpa-pop uli siya. What will happen? Pag nag-pop siya, yung yung D, okay? So, pop. Pasok dito. Top is 4. Not equal to 0. Then, Print natin R sub 4. R sub 4 is D. Okay? And then R sub 4 is equal to null. So, naging null na siya. And then decrement top magiging 3. So, what will happen? The, the content of the stack will now be C, B, A. Okay? Next, let's have another pop. Kunwari, anim uli yung pop na yan. Kasi, mali ba naman ang user kung ilan yung naman ng stock? Ha? So, pangatlong pop. Ganun tayo sa pangatlo. Ito, pangatlo. Okay? So, balik dito. Pop. Value ng top is 3. Not equal to 0. So, true. Print R sub 3. R sub 3 is C. C. I-display muna natin. Bago natin i-assign yung null. So, maging laman ng ating stock will now be B, A. Okay? And then, decrement top. So, top will now be 2. Again, meron na naman tayong pop. So, pop, that means, top natin, ang top ay 2. Okay? Top is 2. Therefore, from 3, magiging 2. R sub 2, not equal to 0. True. Then, R sub, print R sub 2. So, R sub 2, we refer to this one. Okay? So, B. And then, R sub 2 is equal to null. So, wala nang value. And then, the, the stock will now have A. And then, decrement top. So, top will now be 1. May pop ulit tayo. Pop. Tasok ulit doon. So, value ng top natin is 1. Is 1 not equal to 0? True. Then, print R sub top. R sub 1. R sub 1, we refer to this value. So, print natin. So, display natin sa memory. And then, R sub top equals na. So, ito, blank na. And then, de decrement top. So, top magiging 0. Balik ulit doon. Okay? Meron na naman tayong pop. 
Ito na. Okay? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pang-anim na. Pop na. Pop. Pop. Okay? So, nang pinap siya, natin pang-limang pop. Pang-anim, ano mangyayari? Okay? So, sa pang-anim nating pop, okay? Top natin ay 0. Okay? Ang 0 ay equal, not equal to 0. False. So, kapag false, punta sa else, print. Sorry, popping's not allowed. Bakit? Wala ka nang mapapop o oh, kasi stock is empty. Okay? So, pag nilagay niya ulit dyan ang pop, ibig sabihin, wala, walang mangyayari dito sa memory. Pero, dito, meron siyang display na, sorry, popping is not allowed. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? It's not allowed, stock is empty. Okay? Gets? Alright. Thank you. Okay. So, in this case naman, we're going to simply retrieve the top element. Okay? So, if we have elements A, B, C, D, and E. Kunwari lang, ito yung naman ng stock. Okay? So, when, whenever we have stock, top, top ang kukuhanin pa rin value. I mean, ang input parameter natin. So, ito yung index 1, yung R sub 1. Okay? At ito ang R sub 5. So, so for so for that R sub 3 and R sub 3. Okay. Yan. So, top this time is 5. Okay. If top is 5, not equal to 0, so true, then print R sub top. So, sa output natin, ano madi-display? Okay. Very good. The letter Okay? Tapos na. <laughs> oh, mag-stack mag top uli. Sige, stack top uli. Dalawang beses nag-stack top. What will happen? So, stack top uli. The second time. Again, value of top is 5. 5 is not equal to 0. Then, print R sub top. So, print niya lang uli yung letter E. So, it always print the top element. Okay? Ganun lang po siya. Okay, there are a lot of um, stock applications, okay? That, and these stock applications could be classified into four, okay? So, that is reversing a list or reversing data, passing data, okay? I'm sorry, parsing the data, and postponing data usage, and backtracking steps, okay? So, whenever we say reversing a list, it's like, um, remember whenever you, your first year, the, the classical number systems, uh, number system conversion from decimal to hexa, hexa to, to octa, uh, it follows the reversing, uh, I mean, it follows the stock applications, stock operations, no? The push and pop, okay? And then parsing is like, um, um, parsing is like, um, tokenizing each each word or each sentence. So, that means uh, it breaks the data into some independent pieces of further data uh, to further process it. Okay? Normally, parsing is used whenever you have a compiler or you're going to design a compiler. Okay? Um, pag na, if, if you are computer science students, uh, definitely you will have uh, uh, theory of automata and formal languages, okay, or, uh, basta automata, you know, uh, kasi iba iba yung subject name, you know, so you could have the automata subject, doon sa subject na yun, tuturuan kayo pa paano mag-parse, okay, there are a lot of rules that you have to follow, mga, uh, uh, iba't ibang context, CFG, CFG na yan. Uh, actually, automata is my favorite subject. So, yun. And once alam mo na yun, no, yung, yung mga parsing method na yan, definitely you could create a compiler. 
So comp compiler is used to uh, compile a certain source program. Okay? Yan. So pwede kayong gumawa ng program, uh, ng programming language? Yes. Okay? As long as you could also have the compiler. Okay? I remember way back in 1998, 1999, um, uh, I have my students or I... I Assign my students to develop a uh, programming language and compiler because our subject during that time is compiler design. Okay, so they they create their own syntax, they create their own data types. Okay, yon. So those were the days. And then postponement, postponement. Um, eting gagawin natin. No? That is converting expressions, okay? So, like, um, we're going to convert from infix to postfix or vice versa or you're going to convert prefix to postfix or prefix to infix. Like that. And lastly is backtracking. So, backtracking is used in computer gaming, decision analysis, and expert systems, okay? So, this this type of data structure that the stocks okay, has um, a, vari a variety of applications. So, if you have noticed, marami siyang pwedeng paggamitan talaga. Okay? So, ano ba yung postponement? Okay? So, sa postponement, meron tayong kilalang kilala na postfix notation. Okay? So, postfix, it is also known as RPN. Okay? Hindi yan yung channel 9. Okay, so RPN is uh, <laughs> Republic of the Philippines Network, Hindi. reverse Polish notation. So it is named after the Polish logician or mathematician, si John Lucas Rashix. <laughs> okay, so this notation is characterized by operand, operand, operator. So as you have noticed, operator comes at the end of the two operands. Okay. Now, if the operator is written before the two operands, we call it as prefix, okay? or Polish notation. Okay? But if we have the operator in bit, uh, the, if we have the operator placed in between the uh, two operands, then we call it as infix notation. So operand operator operand. Okay? So titingnan niyo lang don yung nasa yung operator saan nakalagay yung operator. Okay? So, in this case, in our example, we have here an infix notation. Okay? Infix. Because the operator, operator, or mathematical operators, are placed in between the operands. Ayan siya. Ito yung mga operators. Okay? And they are placed in between the operands. Operands natin could be characters, letters, ah, uh, characters, letters, signal, pala yung characters or numbers, okay? So, uh, first and foremost, we have to know how to evaluate expressions, okay? So, when, whenever we evaluate expressions, we should know the level of precedence, okay? So, the higher the precedence, uh, the, the operator with the higher precedence is process first, okay? While, uh, normally, if you have two adjacent operators having the same precedence, then you are going to uh, evaluate them from left to right. Okay. How do we do that? Remember, in the evaluation of expression, we have uh, parentheses as the highest, multiplication, division, next level, and third level is addition, subtraction. Okay. So addition, subtraction are of the same level. Multiplication, division are also of the same level. So, hindi tayo gumagamit ng MDAS. Okay? So, if we have this kind of expression, which would, should be evaluated first. Now, remember, we have operators, multiplication, and division. I multiply, divide. Uh, multiplication, division have the same level of precedence. So, Ano unang evaluate sa kanila? 
Ito yun. Ito yung sinasabi. If in case there are adjacent operators having the same precedence, we will evaluate them from left to right. So, from left to right, kaya ito muna. Ito muna. Unang in-evaluate. And then, sumunod so na evaluate yung divide. Okay? Saka natin i-evaluate yung plus minus. So, plus minus. So, nauna, nauna, from left, ito yung left to right. Okay? From left, nauna yung minus. Kaya yung result nung 1 ang ima-minus kay M. At yung result ng subtraction ni 1 at saka ni M, yun, we, we, we call that as third operation, no? Yun ang i-add natin dun sa pangalawa. Okay? So, mas madali kapag ninanumberan. Okay? Ayan yung explanation ko kanina. Okay. So, let's have this example. If we have this kind of example, again, higher precedence is multiplication division. So, since sa una, sa mula kaliwa, na una yung multiplication, set ang unahin natin. Evaluate. And then, followed by, pray natin kung dahil. So, ito yung one, parang walang, in one, Ito yung 2, okay? Bago, addition, subtraction, same level sila. Kaya lang, nauna, from left to right yung plus. So, ito yung pangatlo. <laughs> Para consistent tayo. Ito yung pangatlo. Okay? And then, last natin evaluate ay yung result ng 3 at saka si minus y. Okay? So, that is how we evaluate expressions. Now, kapag naman ganito, uunahin natin mas higher ang level of precedence na nasa uh, parenthesis. So, eto muna, 1. Bago, check natin, multiply. Eto yung 2. Bago siya, i-divide. Bago siya in my minus. Okay? So, that's, that is how we evaluate expressions. Okay? So, another notation is prefix. So, yung una natin ay infix, ngayon ay prefix. So, pag prefix, ibig sabihin, ang sequence niya, na una yung operator. So, operator, operant, operant. Okay? So, based on this example, syempre, titignan muna natin at yung level of precedence. So, we have to evaluate first according to the level of precedence. So, first, nasa lab ng parenthesis, kaya yung 1. And then, mauna muna mag-multiply bago siya i-divide. Okay? So, I think 2, I think 3. Bago yung 2 and 3, ang gagawin natin 4. Okay? So, una evaluate uh, E-divide F. So, E divide F is, operator muna, so divide E, F. Tandaan ko ano yung nasa kaliwa, ito yung left, ito yung right. Diba? Ito yung left, ito yung right. So, left operand, right operand. So, kung sino nasa left operand yung paren, at sino nasa right operand yung paren. Okay? So, operator, operand, operand. Okay? Sumunod. Ayun ko na nga lang po. Para kitang live. Sa so divide, EF. Okay? Sumunod. Second na in-evaluate natin ay ito. Okay? So, times uh, A times B. So, unahin natin yung times A, B. Okay? So, itong dalawang to comes before divide EM. So, copy mo lang yung divide EM. Okay? And then, third, yung C divide yung, yung E divide F. So, that means, dito tayo. Ito yung result, ito yung 1. Diba? Ito yung dating 1. 1. Okay? Yung 1 at saka C divide daw. So, div divide bago C sa kaliwa, 
and then 1. Yung 1 natin yung divide, EF. Okay? O, oh, nalilito sa ganito. Ang pagawin natin para di kayo dito. Sulatan natin ng 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, yung 1, yun yung divide EF. Yun 2, yun yung times, diba, times AD. Yun 3, yun yung C divide 1. C divide, yung 1 is divide EF. Okay? And then yung 4, yun yung 2 and 3. 2 at saka 3. 2 ang nasa kaliwa. So, 2 and 3. Ito ang dalawa, ang titignan mo. Ang operator nila ay plus. So, plus nasa unahan. And then, ang nasa kaliwa, yung 2. Yung 2, etong buong to. So, times AB. And then, yung 3 natin ay divide C divide F. So, ito yung final answer. Tama? Okay. Let's have another um, example. Okay? So, evaluate muna natin. Ito yung 1. Tapos, plus, minus, same level. So, ito yung pangalawa. And then, ito yung pangalawa. Okay? So, we'll write 1, 2, 3. Okay? So, yung 1, prefix muna tayo. Prefix. So, prefix is opera, operator, operand, operand. So, operator, operator, operand, operand. Okay? Operator, operand, operand. Okay? So, itong yun yung number one. So, yun yan. Number two natin is operand, operator, operand. So, that means, itong operator na to, ang lalagay ko sa unahan. So, operator, operand, yun number one, yun, divide RE, and then N. Okay? Sumunod, number three. Number three is 2 minus B. So, sabihin itong buong to. Minus B. So, minus yung operator. So, lagay natin sa unahan. And then, yung 2, ito yan. Copy mo lang. So, plus divide R B N. Ito yung number 2, di ba? Yan. And then, B. So, tip. Ang basa ko dito ay ren B. So, ganun din. Pagka kinakonvert ko siya, dapat magbasa ko rin ng ganyan. Ren B. Okay? Yung arrangement ng operands natin will be the same. Okay? So, in fix, yun nga, operator, operand, operator. So, operator is in between the two operands. Ito yung left operand, ito yung right operand. Okay? So, here are the examples of the infix. Nagalaman nyo, basta nasa gitna ng dalawang operand yung operator. Infix yun. Okay? While postfix is um, kabaliktaran, no? Parang, uh, yung operator nasa dulo. Operator is place. Uh, after the two operands. So, operand, operand, operator. So, how do we do that? Same problem, same given nung kanina. Same arrangement of evaluation, right? Yun nga lang, yung paano siya i-convert. Siyempre, depende dun sa kung anong notation. So, from infix, so from infix to postfix. So, paano yung from infix to postfix? So, that means, kaya natin yung 1. Yung 1, E divide F. So, that, so that man natin. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So one is operand, operand, operator. Operand, operand, operator. Okay? In number two, yan. Operand, operand, operator. So operand, operand, operator. Okay? Sumanod. In number three, ito. C divide 1. So, operan. Operan na nasa kaliwa ay C. Operan na nasa kanan ay number 1. Ito yun. P, F, divide. And then, operan, divide. Okay? And then, number 4 is 2 and 3. 2 and 3. So, 2 and 3, hmm, ang nasa left side, operan, Number 2, copying lang natin yun. Operand 3, so C, E, L, divide, divide, and then operator plus. Okay? Dali, di ba? Next, if we have here, ito na evaluate, followed by this, followed by this. Again, one, two, three. So, yung first natin, operand, operand, operator. So, operand, operand, operator. Yung number two, ito na yung operand. So, operand, operand, operator. So, yung number one, operand, operand, and operator. And then number three, ito naman. Ito na yung buong operand. Operand, operand, operator. So, operand. Operand two, copyin natin yung buong two. Operand, operand, sa kanan, ito naman. And then operator. Okay? Done. At ito ang kanyang Sudo po ulit. Okay. If we don't have to sign it like that. Okay? Question. Alright, Nan. Thank you so much. So, this ends our discussion. Although, um, we will have, I will expound more on the um, infix to postfix, infix to prefix, and vice versa. If we have postfix to infix, prefix to infix, and uh, prefix to postfix, and then postfix to prefix. Okay, so that will be discussed next week. Thank you.